case of Troy Anthony Davis has gained worldwide notoriety. Davis was convicted for the 1989 killing of an off-duty police officer and is currently on death row. The thing is, there was no physical evidence to prove Davis's guilt, and seven of the nine witnesses who originally identified Davis as the murderer have since recanted, some alleging police coercion and intimidation in obtaining their testimony. Now, the likes of Pope Benedict, Jimmy Carter, even Desmond Tutu have all called for justice in this case, and a new court ruling may have dimmed that hope again. Last year, the Supreme Court instructed a federal court judge in Georgia to consider significant evidence of Davis's innocence to surface after his original conviction. Now, a federal judge in Georgia has rejected all those claims of innocence. So what does that mean for the U.S. justice system? And here to discuss it with me is Christopher Chambers, Georgetown University professor and author of the blog, Matt Turner's Revenge. Chris, thanks so much for being here. Uh, you know, what do you make of this case? Do you think that this is an embarrassment for the U.S. justice system? Oh, I think so. I mean, I, it, what's going on here is the Supreme Court playing ping pong with a man's life. I mean, not just Troy Davis's, but Officer McPhail's, who's the who's the victim. I mean, you know, he's waiting for final justice in a way too. And but his family, yeah. and his family, and and they're playing ping pong here. I mean, they sent this back to this judge with this weird, you know, assignment to, to have him prove his innocence. I mean, and that's something that, that's unheard of. It's new, and it, and, and, it, and it shows that the liberals and the, and the conservatives on the court are really going to come together and bash heads on this. Now you have two Obama appointees on there. It's really going to get wild. And in the meantime, you have this man who's on death row who's dealing with evidence of people who are recanting testimony. <laughs> if that doesn't create, you know, if the jury had heard that, would there have been reasonable doubt? Very likely, we wouldn't be having this conversation. Yeah, well, I, I, you know, I, originally I think the notion in this country is that you're innocent until proven guilty. Right. And again, you know, this case is just so unbelievable. Like you said, seven of the nine witnesses have recanted. Uh, they've even admitted police intimidation exactly. here. There's no physical <laughs> evidence, so it's just, it's amazing. You know, I mean, how do you think? Uh, this kind of assistance. I, I, I don't know. I mean, they, because it, usually when this goes up to the Supreme Court, they say yay or nay as a death or appeal. There's some civil rights issue being implicated here. Here, they went through this weird, these weird machinations and sent it back to the court. Not for a full new trial, but just for the judge to say, hey, prove to me you're innocent. What the judge actually is supposed to be doing is saying, what would a reasonable jury do if they heard this, you know, this new evidence? They didn't tell him that. They said, tell the defendant, the guy who's about to get a needle stuck in his arm, to prove that he's innocent. Well, when you're about to take a life, and I know, I mean, there's another side to this. There is other evidence. There's Officer McPhail to think about. But when you're about, the state's about to take a life, you got to have all your T's crossed and I's dotted. There are people in the Supreme Court now, including, you know, Clarence Thomas and Justice Scalia, who basically said, well, if you put an innocent man to death, you know, say la guerre, as, as the French say. I mean, if, if, if certain, if you can check off a certain list, you know, that's too bad. Well, you've got them on one side, another group on the court and the other, and they're really bashing heads on this. And the, the result is, is going to be bad for Troy Day. That's what's so amazing to me, too, is why the Supreme Court in America has never, ever ruled on a case as to whether or not it is constitutional to uh, to put someone, uh, to put an innocent person to death. Well, the, the judge in this case actually did say it's against the Eighth Amendment to put an innocent person to, to death. But here, Troy Troy Davis isn't isn't innocent. So he's playing a little game here, and I and the, the federal judge in, in this case, I don't blame him because the court put him in the middle of it. Now they're going to have to kick it back to them 
And they're going to have to really fight it out. They don't want to do that because the conservatives, obviously, they want to keep the integrity of the system. The liberals on the court either want to do away with the death penalty entirely or make it much more harder to, to put a man to death. It should be hard to put somebody to death. I agree, you know, and I think that that's probably why this case uh, has gained so much.